Nicola McEwen, I'm Professor of Territorial Politics at the University of Edinburgh and Associate Director of the Centre on Constitutional Change. So Nicola, what role did the UK's 2015 general election play in the decision to hold an EU referendum? Well, the Conservative Party had a commitment in its manifesto to hold a referendum, an in-out referendum, and they had made it clear um, in that campaign that that would be a condition of any government that they led. So they had expected to have to form another coalition or at least lead as a minority. Um, so they were drawing a red line under that issue as a, as a, a non-negotiable um, feature of, of any government that they would lead. So in that sense, it was quite important. But in another sense, it wasn't really a dominant campaign theme. It wasn't an issue that fundamentally divided the parties in the campaign. The campaign was much more dominated by the issues of the economy, of competence to govern, and crucially of immigration. And immigration indirectly has become uh, one of the key features, the key issues of contention in this referendum campaign. What was the response from the other parties beyond the Conservatives to the idea about holding a new referendum? Not uh, a great one, not an enthusiastic one, um, but nor a, a huge one in any sense. This is very much a, an issue that has merged from the Conservative Party. It's seen as an, an issue that internally divides the Conservative Party, and I suspect the Prime Minister thought that holding a referendum might be one way to address and perhaps remove the issue uh, that has divided his party for um, many, many years, long before he became Prime Minister. Uh, so it's, it's been a, a, a key issue for the Conservatives, but it's not that the other parties are necessarily wholly united on it. Some are, uh, some less so, but it's just not their issue. It's not the issue that drives and motivates uh, some of the members in those parties in the same way that it is the dominant issue for many people within the Conservative Party. UK-wide referendums are not particularly common. Why did David Cameron choose a referendum to treat the question of Britain's EU membership? Well, I would say that UK-wide referendums and referendums in general in the UK are becoming more common. Um, there have already been 11 um, in the UK. Um, this will be the 12th one. Uh, and that dates back only to 1973. So they are becoming a more prominent feature of UK politics. Sometimes referendums are used to try and stall a decision or to try and use it to resolve a problem. Um, but oftentimes, and this has become increasingly important, I think, in recent years, referendums are seen as a legitimating device, um, a way to ensure that major constitutional change is supported uh, by popular consent expressed directly through a referendum. Will the referendum settle divisions within political parties, particularly within the Conservative Party, on the issue of Europe? I think there's many lessons that we can learn if we look back to the last referendum on, on Scottish independence in 2014. One of those lessons is that a referendum is extremely unlikely to settle an issue, particularly when it exposes the divisions uh, within society as well as the divisions within any particular political party. In this referendum, because it's so clearly and closely contested, because whichever side wins, it looks like they won't win by very much if the opinion polls are accurate, is very unlikely to settle the issue either way, in fact. This issue will remain uh, an issue for the Conservative Party in the years ahead and indeed uh, for the country as a whole.